we're back then with the For Beginners Guide for the Fantastic Four characters for Ultimate Alliance 3. I was planning and hoping to do one a night, and so far I have been able to do that, even though I've been pretty busy. So fingers crossed tomorrow will be the thing that we will cover, and then I've been with it one done every night. But for tonight, we'll check out the, the Fiery Human Torch. Now, in this video, to give you an idea of how he plays, we'll start off, we'll look at his stats, and we'll do a quick general overview. We'll then check out his abilities in more detail. We'll talk about his team bonuses next. We then have the Synergy Attack Guide, that's characters he synergizes well with and Synergy Attacks of particular note. We'll then look at the build option I run on him and the best ice weight you want to equip. We'll check out his alternative costumes, of which he has two, and then we'll finish up with a quick summary. So let's jump in and we'll start off with the overview. The first beginner's guide I'd done for the Fantastic Four then was the awesome invisible woman and she was a, a character that actually there was a fair amount of work that went into the guide because there was so much going on with her kit, whereas with Human Torch I almost feel that I could just fire up a video and say he burns shit and he burns it really good and just leave it at that and that would probably be a good overview of how he actually plays but despite that we will go ahead and we will do the full beginner's guide so please do bear with me as we do go through it, but he is a simple character, so I'm essentially trying to say. Now, when we look at the tags on his abilities, he does really well. He has the energy and the fire tag across all four of his abilities. You can push out more damage ISO-wise from fire, so that's the one you want to itemize for, we will talk about that later on in the video. His hero traits are flight, which is always a useful one, and he has fire and cold resistance as well, and when it comes to build him, that's actually relevant. His stats he doesn't do too good at all, but characters are really defined by their abilities rather than their stats. So his strength is an F, but it's not relevant to him at all. Vitality is an F, so he can be a little bit on the squishy side, but we'll address that when we get to the build option. His mastery and resilience are both a C rating. Durability is an F, and then finally his energy is an A. So that's the general overview. Let's now have a more in-depth look at his abilities. first ability we have here is Flash Forward, so this is your opener move, you can see that it's got a high stagger rating, it's way up at A, so use this to stun an elite or a boss. You'll notice when you use this skill you get a long line of flame behind you, now unfortunately that flame doesn't act as a dot, so you won't set fire to enemies if they walk over it, but the initial ability when you fly through them can set them in fire in the first instance. The next ability we have here is Fireball. Now this one I find is exceptionally good at taking out trash, but you can actually use it to take out elites and bosses as well once they are stunned of course. So you would start off with Flash Forward and then you can certainly follow up with Fireball and you'll do a real nice amount of damage. Next up we have a fantastic ability, this one is Controlled Burn, so with this you spin round and you leave a large flame dot area, so what you do normally is you'll use Flash Forward, get next to a group of enemies, fire off your Controlled Burn, and then from there you'll start to spam your other moves. Now you can only have one instance of this, it's not like Alex of Gam, but he could have two areas of his dot and they would actually overlap, so there's only one of these you can put down. Once you cast the next one, the first one will go away, so don't spam this, otherwise you will be wasting your energy. Finally, with this one as well, it adds the fire element to ally attacks, and it's over a pretty wide area as well, so with certain characters, this can certainly really ramp up their damage. The final ability we have here is Rising Heat, and this one can actually do really nice damage on a boss when they're, they're stunned or staggered, despite the fact it says the damage rating is C on it. It really is pretty respectable. So rotation wise what I would do for the Human Torch is you want to start off with Flash Forward to get in the enemy's face. If it's an Elite or a boss you then do Control Burn to place down your dot. Once they're stunned or staggered or to get them to that point what you can then do is start firing down your Fireballs and your Rising Heat. Rising Heat seems to do slightly more damage when I have tested it but they are really very similar damage wise. In regards to his basic is Heavy and it's Extreme Attack. Extreme Attack looks great, you get a huge fiery 4 on the, the screen but other than that it doesn't do anything special. Light attack is a regular ranged one, the heavy attack is a, a flame that you can actually hold down which is pretty great for a heavy attack. 
but the aiming of, of it is really wonky and I can't seem to figure it out at all so that does pull it down a little bit unfortunately. But that's all these abilities so let's check out the team bonuses. Team bonus wise, like the other Fantastic Four characters we've looked at, he can't really go too high in regards to the, the amount of bonuses he can get stat wise. He has part of five different teams and one of them is a new one, which has got a pretty awesome name, but it's Forces of Nature, Family Values, Fantastic Four, Wisecracking Warriors, and then finally with the new patch we got the, the Smooth Operators, so you've got Iron Man, Human Torch, Star Lord and Gambit. Now, as a result of the inclusion of that, the character that's got the most amount of bonuses you can pair him up with would actually be Star-Lord. You can see that he's in three different teams there, but at the end of the day I always say run the team you want, don't feel too hemmed in by the bonuses you get here. Now, let's have a look at the synergy attacks. Synergy attack wise he does well due to the fact that he's got the four different traits on his abilities, so you've got charge, burst, burn and slam, and you can see as a result of that you can get a load of different attacks. None of them are especially effective the likes of Ricochet, but it is still easy enough to get your synergy attacks off when you do need them. The top five synergies, the top one is Crystal Hulk and Star-Lord. If you run this team, it may not be the most effective for the actual synergy attacks you get, but they've got as many as 65 different attacks. You've then got another three team setups here that are all on 65 as well. So it's Hulk, Star-Lord and Hawkeye, Hulk, Luke Cage, Star-Lord, Crystal, Star-Lord, Wolverine, and then finally, still at a pretty respectable 64, you've got Crystal, Luke Cage and Star-Lord. So once again, if you're looking to get synergy attacks, the two character names that always really crop up are Crystal and Star-Lord. They can help you push out the numbers there if you may be doing an Infinity Trial or a Gauntlet, and you can only do your, your synergy attack damage. Now, let's look at the, the build I'm running on him. Build wise then it's all about making the most of his fire damage, so I call this a ring of fire build, the optimal isos that are at the top, you want to go for increased damage of fire ability attacks by 24.9, then have increased crit chance of fire attacks by 13.1, try and get a few of them because the fact that fire doesn't actually auto stun or crowd control enemies the same way shock and frost does it means you're not getting auto crits so you want to actually add the crits into his fire dots you can really ramp up damage with this also there is an ISO where you can recover 4.1% of fire ability damages hit points that helps out with squishiness and then finally within the shield depot there's an ISO that gives you with an ongoing phoenix force effect now that ups your damage numbers by a nice amount and the downside of this is normally you take out a fire dot but he's immune to fire which means he has all the upsides of this doesn't have many of the downsides now until you get those isos ones that can work out well are ones that would increase your energy damage your energy crit chance you've then got the flat damage done to enemies you've got your increased mastery because he's all energy tag and then you've got the increased crit chance as well but the ones you're aiming for are the ones at the top so that's the build i'm running let's have a look at his alternative costumes First alternative costume we have here is a simple reculling of his base costume. Now, Duty's Flames, unfortunately, you can't really see this as much as it is a nice looking costume. In order to get this, you play the Shadow of Doom story mode. It has to be on superior, and when you're working your way through the negative zone, destroy all the chests within that zone, and one of them will drop this costume. The final costume we have then is the Future Foundation costume and just before anyone asks we do not at the time of this video have an alternative recolour in this one in game at all but in order to unlock this you play the Shadow of Doom Gauntlet as the later stages so you will need to be around about level 200 or so in order to get this but this one unlike the red costume you can actually see the visuals of it a lot better under all these flames. But let's now finish up anyway with a quick summary. Human Torch is a pretty simple character and uh, he burns stuff and he does it really well but that is 
what is to be expected from him. I'm sure when I cover Thing tomorrow night, he'll smash stuff and he'll smash them really well. But again, that's what the character is known for doing. Now, one thing I will mention though is that I would say he excels more at trash clearing than boss clearing. Not to say he's bad at clearing your bosses, but there are better characters. But trash wise, he does exceptionally well. So if you're looking to maybe go into a danger room and it's one of the ones where you've got your different stages where you need to defeat 200 enemies, then you can work exceptionally well clear time wise there but let me know in the comments below how you're getting on with them what you think of them if you enjoyed the video take the time to hit the like button the subscribe button and thanks for tuning in stay safe and i'll see you all again soon